Hey everybody, welcome to the podcast. Thank you for being here. Camera one, camera two. Camera one, camera two. I'm excited. Week after week, we're doing a night shoot tonight. A little bit different. It's a little bit different. We're mixing it up here in the garage studio that has been called the Hot Box Office. Yes, I love the title. I love it. It was written... It was written from, uh, it, was, it was given to me as a gift. Is it in the shot? What is it doing? <laughs> Debbie's reaching in, readjusting the table. Is it messing you up? I got something on the table she didn't like. <laughs> You'd think she was a Virgo, the way she is. I was, uh, the name was given to me kind of as a combo from my neighbor, one of my neighbors here, and myself. Because he called it the hot box. And I was like, well, it's an office. And then I thought of box office because I love movies. So now it is referred to as the hot box office. Just for now. Affectionately so. We are at episode 385. How is that possible? It seems so impossible. The possible is impossible. And the impossible becomes possible. All on a podcast. Anything can, can happen. Even my dream of wanting to be a thousand five-star rated podcast that can come true dropping that in guys this is a dr peluso episode fake doctor giving you real advice i am not a real doctor i do not recommend this to replace your medical personnel your medical advice or any of that i am a regular human being giving you advice that i've learned from the street take it or leave it okay Fake doctor, real advice, there's a hair on my microphone. And we've got a bunch of questions, but before we get into that, we're going to do an overheard that got overlooked a couple weeks ago, and it was something that dropped into the Deuce thread. I have another podcast called The Deuce with Mike Tully, who is a co-host, professional co-host of podcasts. Mike Tully has a thousand podcasts. And this one happened in a, in a chat thread. So I don't know if we can even count it, but we're going to count it because Tully texted something in the Deuce chat and, and both Deb and I went, huh? So this is an overheard. If you're like, what the F is an overheard? It is anything that you hear in life that is just a single sentence and it has to be taken completely out of context and it doesn't need to make sense. It just has to be very weird. The weirder, the better. The more weird, the non sequitur, the more fun. So keep that in mind when you're have your ears wide open in the world. This is something Tully texted and it's just the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. He said, have been trying to find a day that works with my Sherpa forever. Rot row. Had to go the old Google translate for that one. What did you just say? Your jacket? Your Sherpa? So Tully's apparently scaling a mountain. The things that men do to feel accomplished, it's actually very admirable. I scale emotional mountains every day. That's why women, for the most part, I'm sure there's a bunch of women who rock climb and scale mountains and do those long journeys. You know, the people who go and they have the people who dress like Krampus help you walk up the side of a mountain so... You can be at the top of some mountain that most people die to the top of. I don't need to do that. I don't need to do that. I'll go to the mall on Black Friday if I want to have that kind of intensity and fear of dying. I don't need to go on the top of a mountain. I have a girlfriend who I've known for years. One of my besties from the Resties. Shout out to EC Berm. We live together in New York. And she has a dream of climbing Mount Everest. And I said, you're going to die. You're going to die. People want to climb Mount Everest to me. What I'm hearing is I want to die. A slow, painful, cold death. Well, you can do that in my neighbor's cold dip if you want to do that. So uh, Tully's climbing a mountain because I guess marriage isn't difficult enough. <laughs> he says I might be climbing a mountain rescheduled from today. I think I'll know tomorrow. And I said, wait, you weren't waxing poetic. I thought this guy was just... Drop it in the chat that he's scaling a mountain. I said, like a real mountain? Have been trying to find a day that works with my Sherpa forever. That's the most white 
L.A. guy I've ever heard in my life. It doesn't get more white L.A. guy than that in your life. And shame on you, Tully. Shame! Shame, you should have to climb that mountain naked. With people chiming behind you with bells. Shame! Shame, man. I just feel like it's a little bit... It, it seems like a privileged quest. This isn't directed at Tully, but just in general, things like that. Where you go play with death for fun. And there's people out here who have to do it for survival on a daily basis. And you're just going and doing it as a vacation. Feels a little self-indulgent. That's all I'm going to say. That was judgy. Yep, I'm in a judgy mood. Speaking of judgy, I am going to be the doctor judge today. We have a few questions from the people for Dr. P. We're going to get to those. I had to tear Tully apart. I also want to talk about something. We're, we're going to be doing a gift guide, and I decided to combine grieving and a gift guide into one episode. I realized I said that was going to be this week. I'm going to do that next week. So you guys can look out for that. And then I'm going to be giving a gift guide for the, the guy who has it all. It's so hard to shop for people who have everything. People who are well off, well to do, affluent, or just independent, maybe minimalists. I have an idea for them. I have an idea for single moms. I have an idea for moms in general, for lonely aunts, for your dogs. A whole bunch of gift ideas that'll be for, for next week's episode, as well as how to deal with grieving through the holidays, because a lot of you have asked me questions about that. That'll be in next week's episode. This week's just a lot of fun giving advice. But before we get to that, speaking of parents, there was this video on the, on the World Wide Web of a cat babysitting. It's from today years old. I recommend this page. They post a lot of weird stuff, kind of like puberty, which I still don't know who runs puberty. And I don't know why it's called puberty. It makes me think of pubic and then I get, I feel weird. But uh, this video is of a cat who's basically babysitting. Now this baby who looks like every baby in every Pixar movie is crawling. And then you see him actually check back with the cat. Like the baby's crawling on this dirty ass floor. This is obviously somebody struggling a little bit or the camera's just bad. But this floor looks like it's seen a couple crimes. And maybe it has. And maybe that's why the baby's cr crawling away. Maybe the baby's trying to crawl away because it's looking at the floor like, I don't know if I'm going to survive till tomorrow. I need to get out of the house. The cat goes because apparently just beyond the camera's view are stairs. The cat goes and, and tackles the kid, bites it, scratches it, and pushes it back in the room. I have so many questions. One, where are the parents? Judging by the look of this room, Parents haven't been there in a hot minute. Two, how many times has this happened? Since, how many times has this happened that the cat has become trained to know that the kid's going to fall down the stairs? Three, I didn't know cats gave an F. Did you guys know cats cared? I thought cats killed kids. That's what I was taught. I was taught that cats suck your life source out by Stephen King. And I will stand by that. I think it was Stephen King. The cat's eye. People fall asleep and the cat sucks out your energy like it's a kale smoothie on Rodeo Drive. The cat's like, I will suck out your life source. So I don't know what's going on in this video. All I know is I want to take the kid. I would leave the cat. I would take the kid and leave the cat. It's a scary video all around. It's a haunting in, in many different ways. I hope this child is protected by an actual adult. And the thing that really bothers me about this video, if I'm being honest, is the way the drapes are bundled in a knot by the window. Why not just get a hook and tuck them behind that? Tuck them behind the hook. Who balls up drapes? Maybe the adult is watching through the window in the backyard. I don't know. I, I don't know what's real anymore. All I know is my sister's wasting money on a babysitter. If these cats are available, why are you paying babysitters? Set up the website. Cat sitters. R us. Your kid won't fall down a flight of stairs with my cat taking care of your kid. $1,000 an hour. It's just insane. It's absolutely insane. Now, I don't know if you guys remember uh, a few weeks back and for a few episodes, I was commenting on things and people were commenting back and I didn't realize where sarcasm lied I don't know where where sarcasm was anymore because I was being sarcastic and then people were being sarcastic back with me and I thought that they were being serious and then they were actually being sarcastic so we all got lost in the mix 
But there's this video that was posted a while back that about 14 weeks ago. I don't know what that is. It sounds like the way people age their their babies when they're newborns. Yeah, he's a thousand weeks old. What, Stacy? What kind of witchery math is that? 14 weeks ago, now this is Earth posted a video of this concert in New England, a drone footage of the trash left behind this UK festival. In the cleanup crew at the Leeds Festival in Leeds, England, the scene was utterly appalling. After reporting, 90,000 plus attendees left their tents and trash behind the festival site when it ended on August 27th. Now, it looks completely destroyed, and it is destroyed. There's trash everywhere. I said, this is why we shouldn't have nice things. It's not anything I'm thinking hard about. I'm looking at a video. I'm seeing the trash. I'm commenting on it. People are sitting at home waiting to be pissed off. Everyone's sitting at home just waiting to be pissed off all the time, and it's exhausting. I'm commenting. That's all I'm doing is commenting. 75 comments. First one says, to know I see zero trash cans. I get that. At your own house, you even have trash cans. But never have I ever gone to a place like a concert and just left my trash behind. I'm not the type of person who makes a mess at the movie theater. Like if I get scared and my popcorn falls over the, the ground, okay, I'm, I'm going to try and pick up some of it. But obviously I, there's an understanding that somebody's going to come and clean that up a little bit. But people leave all of their trash behind at movie theaters. This is the same people who leave all of their trash behind at a festival. I'm sorry, but is it too much to expect people to just maybe plan to bring your shit back with you? People left tents. They left all of their items. I see a car. Someone left a car. It's probably somebody who's flying the drone footage, but there's a car left behind. It literally looks like a zombie outbreak happened in seconds and everybody died. Or a tornado came through and sucked up all the people, blew the trash around, and then said peace out. It is a absolutely insane the amount of trash left behind. And some people agreed with me. Some people said things like, no, this is why we can't have nice things. We should, we can, but people who do things like this is why we can't. See, she gets it. She understands me. And then other, somebody else said, we, you mean we can't have nice things. We should, but some people can't handle it. See, people are starting to understand it. But then there's people like Jose Guerra, who says there are very few to no trash cans in soccer stadium sitting rows, but Japanese clean up absolutely everything around them. It is not the trash cans. It's a type of people. See, people started to understand what I was saying. This is why I think that maybe global warming is starting to happen because we're being so, so rude. This isn't anything groundbreaking, but nature is really not handling how we're handling ourselves. She don't like it. Sailor Jupes says, there are no trash cans when I go camping. I don't leave trash everywhere. See, people understand, like, you can't just leave your trash everywhere. It's common knowledge you take out what you bring in. Also, tents won't fit in trash cans. Exactly. What were you planning on doing with the tents in the first place? Who spends their money on tents and just leaves them behind? It looks like a homeless encampment that was abandoned because of a horrible outbreak. And, you know, it's, it's, it's to me, I, I don't even know how this got, ended up getting resolved. And people just came at me. A lot of people came at me. They were rude. So one person said, who's we? You can clearly see that some people have cleaned up after themselves. Who? Who's cle <laughs> who cleaned up after themselves? You can't see one clean, clean space at all. These people will leave trash no matter what. They're too lazy to take the trash to the dumpsters. The trash cans themselves will be destroyed and trashed by these people. Exactly. See, my point is, it doesn't matter what the situation is. There's always going to be people who don't respect it. So, the cure? Maybe we don't have festivals anymore. Maybe we don't have festivals anymore and everyone can really stay home and see what that feels like. There's got to be some way that we can reprimand all people who do things like this. And unfortunately, it's happening now. Mother Nature's flooding us. She's hurricaning us. She's tornadoing us. And the unfortunate thing, some good people are going to go with it. Well, let's lift this up by bringing some advice to the people. Because <laughs> I basically told you that we're going to die. We're all dying. Let's move on. Okay, Dr. P episode, we're going to get to some questions here. If you guys want to submit your questions, once in a while we're going to be posting that on my Instagram story. 
And if you want to email them to me, you can email them at jessiemaypelusocomedy at gmail.com. Oh, wait, before we get to that, somebody famous slipped in my DMs. You guys already saw when Brad Pitt slipped into my DMs. We're going to kind of consider this some May Bay's mail. I got some mail from a May Bay. And I don't want you guys to be too intimidated, but Keanu Reeves slid in my DMs. And he said, hello. And I said, Keanu, is this you? And he said, yes, it's me. The Keanu Reeves. Obviously, it's him. He's got 1.2 thousand followers. That's a lot. It's 1,200 followers. And it's his photo, even though it looks like the AI version of him. It's for sure, for sure him. So he goes, yes, it's me. And I didn't respond. He responds again. How are you doing? See, Ke this is such a Keanu move. He's ch checking in. He wants to make sure. Then he sends two question marks. To which I reply, like the Keanu Reeves? He says, yes, am the real Keanu Reeves. Nice to meet you, Jesse May, which sounds so Keanu. It's the most Keanu thing he's ever said. I didn't respond. He said, hello, can I have your contact so we can communicate privately? Then I ran away and I was scared because I was for sure that Keanu was a scam and all of my information was going to be stolen. Don't put that out in the universe. You know what we're going to put out in the universe? Five star podcast, a thousand five stars. Shredded Yogi, don't forget what they said. Love the show. It's relatable. It's fabulous. Let's get this gal to a thousand five star reviews. Let's do it. Okay, I just wanted to brag about Keanu Reeves slip slide into my DMs. Let's get to some of these questions here. Captain Ashtray. I'm going to guess that your name's Ashley and maybe your last name's Trey something. Captain Ashtray says, do you have any tips for reducing intense anxiety panic attacks? Oof. Mm. I have to be honest. I have dealt with panic attacks. And my panic attacks were occurring during a time of immense stress. And I, we all experience, I think, a, a residual amount of stress on a daily basis, especially if you live in the city. The city life has numerous ways of delivering consistent stress. Going to the grocery store sounds peaceful. In a city like L.A., it's not. You have to really plan your day out. You've got to plan your travel. You have to consider assholes at the grocery store. That was a weird noise. Did you hear that? You have to consider so many different situations and factors when you're traveling around a big city. There's a lot of stressors that go into living in, in the city. So I think just on a daily basis, depending on where you live, you have a lot of anxiety. And I certainly have anxiety surrounding work. And you can have anxiety surrounding your relationships or home life. So the first thing for me is I had to identify why I was having panic attacks. And I was having panic attacks because, for one, I was in a very difficult situation a few years back with a difficult person who I had to get out of my life that I've, I think I've been kind of open about on the podcast. And the other time when I was having horrible anxiety and panic attacks was around when my father was sick and when he was dying. And I didn't know what was happening. When you're having a panic attack, you feel like you're dying. And it's so scary. And, you know, for me, I'm, I'm all about, you know, you said, do I have any tips for reducing intense anxiety and panic attacks? And I like that you said reducing because to me that gets ahead of it. What it's really about for me and what it became about for me was creating better habits throughout my day and throughout my life that can mitigate and manage stress. It really comes down to stress management for me. And acknowledging that you have stress, because I think as people, we're so resilient that sometimes we don't even like to acknowledge that we're experiencing stress, especially if you're a guy, you probably feel like this bravado need to be tough. And some women too, where you don't want to admit that you feel stress because it's a sign of weakness. Well, you better find some people in your life that you can admit that to. Because even saying that you're stressed releases some of it. Acknowledging what you're feeling releases the feeling itself so for me I had to really like understand why I was having it and go oh this is stress I'm having stress and I had to say it to my sister and say it to my mom and say I'm feeling sad or I'm feeling worried or whatever it was whatever the emotion was that was the driving force around this time of my life I had to express it it's important to express what you're feeling 
and for me, the second most important, maybe the most important thing in my life is to move. I always talk about movement. Move, bitch. Get out the way. You need to move. Movement is the antidote for anxiety. I really believe that. I really believe that for me, movement is an antidote for anxiety. It helps just get all of the cobwebs out. The blood flow helps carry away the, the negativity and the toxicity in your, in your bloodstream and the toxicity in your being. There's so much residual stress that kind of cakes itself onto you in so many different ways, physically and, and metaphysically and spiritually and emotionally. Movement really helps all aspects of that and really can mitigate what you're experiencing. I say that word a lot lately. I don't even know if I'm using it right. Words just come out. It's a 50-50 shot. But it's really about movement. It's about acknowledgement. It's about movement. And it's also, ironically, as I say, it's a lot about a movement. It's a lot about movement. It's a lot about peace and finding serenity, true peace. And I think the conversation around peace gets kind of confusing and mucked up. Because I think people get stuck on this idea of people needing to be all zen and find your center and make sure you connect with your yoni chakra. All that's great. Peace can come from doing something you truly enjoy. True joy for me delivers real peace. Like finding those activities that you love that you don't get to do enough. That's usually the thing that you should be doing is the thing you don't get to do enough. Whatever you, you know, you ever like hang out with somebody or meet somebody and like, oh, how you doing? You're like, oh, I'm so busy. And you're like, oh, what's going on? And I'm doing this, this and this. But man, really wish I could have some time off so I could. Whatever the thing is after that sentence, after those words, that's what you should be doing. So for me to reduce intense panic attacks it really comes down to everything before then. What happens before then? What's happening leading up to then? There is a way out. There was a way out for me. There are ways to manage them. And all the breathing and grounding techniques you can look up. There's a lot of breath work that helps you just breathing in general. Just really taking those breaths. You know when you are relaxed at the end of the day and you're like, and you like exhale Taking those consciously, like breathing like that consciously really works. You can Google breath work. There's a bunch of white dudes in LA who teach you how to do it. (laughs) But Wim Hof, you know, even though people might call him crazy or kooky or whatever, I I do believe in breath work. I do believe in cold exposure. I believe in sauna. I believe in yoga. All of those things that sort of create these heat and cold shock proteins in your body do something. There's science to it. So look into all of that. The beautiful thing, I think, is all these things are free. All of these tools are free. And it might be cheesy, but I journal. I really do journal. I have a crystal. (laughs) Everyone's had talismans for years. Whatever your thing is, you know, you're the one who brings the magic to the item that you hold. So it's you and your belief. So whatever it is. For me, I just like to have something in my hand and... I believe in the power of the earth and the power of the elements of the earth, but it's more about me and my consistency and and my ability to, to be present and really write down whatever I'm feeling. There's no rhyme or reason. I don't write one single way each day. It changes. It's very fluid and, and intuitive. And that goes for men and women. I think when it comes to gender roles, I'm pretty traditional when it comes to relationships, but when it comes to individuals and what works, throw all of the gender connection to it out the window the whole blue pink conversation as a man you can journal and as a woman you can punch a wall well maybe not a wall but a punching bag so you have to get a little bit more creative in your idea of of your outlet let go of preconceived notions about whatever it is and how it should be according to your gender and be consistent and just know that anxiety and panic attacks are a symptom of what you're experiencing and acknowledging that what you're experiencing is stressful can really be the first step to you finding all these amazing free tools. So I hope that helps. Oliviero, Oliverio, Joe, Joe, Oliverio, holding the fish, hasn't changed his profile pic in years. Remember this guy, Deb? He's got the big old fish. When will this upstate funny, intelligent, and 
Chinook and Babe go out with me? Never. Next question. Joe. It's adorable. We got to keep this relationship professional. Brad Galbraith. Best gifts for side piece. <sighs> your, your wife or your girlfriend's number? Are you serious? Best gift for a side piece? An STD test and a goodbye note. Enough, Brad. You know what the best gift for a side piece is? Your therapy appointment. And the first question should be, why am I trying to fill a void? Because you're obviously trying to fill a void if you have a side piece. But I'm going to guess that you're being silly. I, I respect it and expect it and appreciate it. We love a little bit of fun on this podcast. It's half the reason why we do it. Staying silly. My, ironically, my friend who I mentioned earlier, E.C. Berm, sent a message that I can't read, which is even more ironic because she's an actually professional person. Like, she's a lawyer and a real estate agent and is, is successful. And she asked a question that if I were to repeat it, we don't know if she'd have a job. <laughs> Her and I know so much about each other that I will never, ever do anything to, to threaten her livelihood. So I'm going to move on. Tim Fresh One says, can we romance? No, Tim. And your photo looks like, who's the guy from MySpace? Tom. Your photo looks like the guy who created some app. And Tim, you've kept your photo the same for a while too. Don't think I don't know. Tim, Tom, Tom, and John. Uh, Julia O'Reilly. I wonder if your last name's O'Reilly and your photo is adorable. Missed you, doctor. I missed you, too. The doctor's been gone for a little bit, so I missed you, too. How can I manifest my goals for my 35th birthday? <gasps> this is a good one. I'm a big believer in manifesting. Not on a, like, spiritual felicity way. <laughs> but I have manifested my entire life. Both consciously and subconsciously. Manifestation's a huge part of actually achieving your goal. I think manifestation might be the most important. And it's all about really visualizing where you want to be and seeing it. Seeing it in your in your mind's eye, even your third eye. Even while people are eyeing you, it's important to see it all the time. And I think sometimes you look at people who've become successful and you don't understand people who maybe have minimal talent or not as enough not enough talent that you would assume someone who's achieved that amount of success should have or could have sometimes people just believe in themselves and they've manifested something for so long that it comes true for them talent's only a part of the the game when it comes to whatever you're trying to achieve oh i hate those little weird neck noises that come out sounds like i'm leaking what was that I feel like i'm sinking it's like a, when, if you hear that noise in a boat, you're like, oh, shit, we're going down. <laughs> Did you hear that over there? So I've manifested my entire life. I didn't manifest the noise that just came out of my throat. But it's really important to just see where you want to be. You got to see it. You need to be able to, to really put yourself in that place. How can you get somewhere if you haven't seen where it is? And... Obviously, there's something to roaming and, and discovering new places. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about your life and your goals and places you want to go. Think about people who just want to get to America. They envision that trip and they imagine what their life's going to be. And that's what keeps them going. People who are escaping horrible countries and horrible situations and, and relationships and, and living situations. Like that baby on the floor. That baby is manifesting a better life. The baby, that baby had dreams and the baby was like, I deserve better than this. Manifesting is, it's an art form and it takes a concerted effort. And that's part of the reason why I built my hot box office, my she shed. And it helps me. That's the v Venice bird. My man says whenever he's on the phone with me, he goes, oh, I hear the, f the state bird rude. It's a, it's a car alarm. It's an ambulance and a police siren. Those are all the, the standard birds of Venice, California. Manifesting for me has been something that I do as an effort and something that I have just done because of who I am. And 
I think it's okay to obsess about your dreams a little bit. They're your dreams. This is a short life, man. We can get, you're going to get made fun of. You're going to have people who doubt you. You're going to have people who think your dreams are stupid, mainly because that's how they feel about themselves. They doubt themselves. They feel dumb and they, they don't believe in themselves. And that's unfortunate, but that's not you. So ways you can manifest your goals for your 35th birthday. What do you want? Are, is there someone's who, someone's life who you'd like to live and I don't even like that because I think there's, well, it's cool to see how people have achieved what they've achieved and it's important to see where you can go. And it's sort of that competitive energy and that competitive edge. Like you look at somebody who's got more than you and you want it. That's great. And you can use it as a motivating factor, but you have the ability to create something new for yourself. You can use inspirations and motivations from other people's steps and the way people have moved in their life. But as far as manifesting for yourself, get a journal get a mentor. I listen to motivating podcasts. I, it might be a cheesy thing, but I do. There are some really profound and, and original, that sounded like a gunshot, and original thought leaders and, and thinkers and speakers. There's so many different avenues that you can focus on as far as where to go for videos and what types of videos to look at and people to follow. There's so many free things for you to look at on, on the interweb, even though I don't want to keep you on your phone. But I do think first and foremost, what do you want to achieve? And for me, I used to have like, lo I have lofty goals. I've had lofty goals my whole life. I always wrote them down. I think it's important to write your dreams down. I have a book that I've kept and I, I re recycle my books and I write new stuff all the time. But I'll show you right here. I've got this book. And it says dream big. I'm such a nerd. I've always been a nerd. But I keep these books and these are where I write down all my ideas. I write down all my ideas. Writing's so important. Don't get too stuck on your freaking phone. You got to write. Writing connects your brain to the reality of what you're trying to achieve and, and, and helps you remember more. But here, here's my goals. My 2023 goals, my 2024 goals. And I write them down and I look at them. Out of sight, out of mind. The first step to not to, to manifesting your goals is keep them in sight. Keep them in sight. And align yourself with people who have worked on those things. Don't be afraid to network. People look down on networking. There's nothing wrong with networking. It's how we develop as people. We network. We build a tribe. Build your tribe. Write down your goals. Build your tribe learn some new skills, listen in on seminars, listen to podcasts. Um, there's so many different ways for you to grow and for you to have your dreams become actualized that there's no reason for them to not happen. And then when you look at people who've achieved stuff, you're like, this guy, this girl, how? Because she believed in herself. She kept a... Uh, uh, you guys making fun of all those people with mood boards and all those people with what do they call those things with all the paper clippings and the and the things and the photos you know you like get your girls together and you what's the thing called it's like a uh inspiration board does that sound about right yeah you get like all the girls over and do a little inspiration board you make fun of those people let's see where they're at i guarantee you i guarantee you and i know this name's gonna really make a bunch of you cringe i guarantee you taylor swift had an inspiration board i guarantee deb's leaving the studio i guarantee you taylor swift had an inspiration board you gotta tap into your 14 year old girl we were such good dreamers as kids we dreamed so much all we did was manifest as children you gotta tap into your inner child and i think maybe something else you can do to help you manifest your goals is hang out with kids there goes that damn neck noise again <laughs> hang out with children children are amazing manifestors they manifest everything i've got to be careful what you say with children in the word like that children manifest everything they literally create something out of nothing all the time because of their imaginations they're so magical at that and unless they've been taught they don't understand limitations children do not understand the concept of limitations. That's why they ask why so much. That's why they challenge so much. Well, why can't I have a pony? Well, why can't Santa come over in July? 
I think every new startup, every new company should have a toddler, a speaking toddler on its board, at least a seven-year-old. Because their ideas come from pure curiosity and pure joy. And we adult that out of us at some point. So, Julia O'Reilly, tap into your inner kid. Make your inner, make your, your inner kid proud of you. Um, Ina Mai G. Ina Mai G. I, I, I always, she's also kept her profile picture. Ina Mai, Ina Mai G. I don't know what, I, Ina, please email me. I, maybe we've emailed before, but can you email me and let me know what your full name is? I won't share it on, do you know, Deb? Ina Meiji, let us know because I would love, love to be able to know who you are because you've asked. Your questions are always amazing and you always open us up to great conversation. And this is such a great question. Her question is getting through the holidays as an orphan with no family here in the States is so depressing. And I don't know if there's a more to that because it kind of cuts you off. Um, and I want to go into that on next week's episode because it's going to tap into what I want to talk about grieving through the holidays. So Deb, we got to make a note to tap into Ina's question for next week. I, there's so much to go into with that. I am also an orphan, not the same type of orphan as that kid in, in the, the room with the cat, but my parents are dead. So I consider myself an orphan. My sister and I, we call ourselves orphans. And I, have a lot of thoughts on that and so I would like to dedicate a chunk of the podcast next week with the gift ideas and grieving through the holidays for you so we'll round this Dr. P episode out with one last question from Johnny Mac Creates who's also asked a bunch of questions I love that there's some OGs in here um, before I get to your question we'll Blakey Sherm Sherman 5465 Always has to chime in, and we love him. He said, did I order my cowboy croc boots yet? My cowboy croc boots have not been ordered yet. Hopefully, Deb, put it on my Christmas list. <laughs> because I know Drew Barrymore got a pair. Drew Barrymore got a pair of cowboy croc boots. I have not yet. Chaplin and I are looking for a matching pair of cowboy croc boots. If anyone out there can make it happen, email us at jessiemaypelusocomedy at gmail.com. We'll wear them. We'll wear them on Patreon. Last question by Johnny Mac Creates. Tips on beating the add-on of winter depression. Now, winter depression is such a consistent thing in my family. My father suffered from winter depression. We always joke that homicide should be allowed during the winter months in upstate New York. And the winter months in upstate New York are different. They're cold. They're dark. And I know you're like, yeah, I'm in Alaska. It's always cold and dark. I have to say, LA right now is cold and dark. It's been dark since 4 p.m. It really does something to you. It changes you. And it's just, you know, that movie, it makes me think of that movie 30 Days of Night. I feel like we should have a 30 Days of Night everywhere just in the wintertime. Kind of like a purge, like a winter purge. Just a cute little... We should just have a cute little short winter purge to help us all deal with winter depression. We don't murder each other, but we do cause and inflict some harm to at least exercise those chilly ass demons. We're all cold. We've been bored. We're sick of Uber Eats. We're sick of, of Netflix. There's nothing on Netflix. What are we going to do? We should be able to shove someone into oncoming, oncoming traffic. We should... <laughs> We should have a relay race with elderly people on ice. I'm spitballing. I'm spitballing. We should we should have children. This would be fun. Now think about this. Winter time, okay? We set up an ice rink, a lot of great lights. Beautiful lights. Kind of looks like a Hallmark scene. You know, you, you, those scenes in Hallmark and the girls like a Olympic ice skater and the lights are just why do they have string lights why are there string lights in the ice rink nobody questions it it's just hallmark we're gonna light it real nice we're gonna have kids who ice skate it's gonna feel like a free skate you know a bunch of kids on ice skates adults on ice skates but the adults are gonna be dressed all as krampus chasing the children i really feel like that could help winter depression is if we could <laughs> if <laughs> if we could scare the joy out of kids 
I realize it sounds like a very conflicting statement, seeing as I just told Julia, oh, right, oh really, to tap into her inner child. Well, I want her to tap into her inner child because I want to skate after it, like the Christmas demon that I am. No, but winter depression is serious. It's a real, it's a real vibe. It's hard to battle. My dad hated it, and he always threatened. Oh, this would be my dad. The second, the second a single snowflake, or even when it went from, you know, those days in the fall where you'd have those beautiful, like, fall days that are, like, 70 degrees. You know those days that would just pop up, and it'd be, like, 70 degrees, and then the next day it would be, like, 30? My dad would go, here we go. Here it is. He'd just stand out the window waiting for one single snowflake to fall so he could just unleash on all of us. I'm going to Florida. My dad would threaten to go to Florida every winter. Every winter, this guy would threaten to go to Florida. I'm going to move there. It'd be, it'd, be, it'd be November 1st and Joe would be like, packing my bags. I'm packing my bags. I'm going to go see Joe Georgiana. I'm going to go down and see Joe Georgiana. What are you going to do with Joe Georgiana? We're going to be hot. We're going to be hot. My dad would go visit Joe Georgiana. Joe Georgiana would call me because inevitably my dad would set something on fire. Ironically, when my dad escaped the winter to Florida, he'd set Joe Georgiana's house on fire. One time Joe called me and it was so early. You know, they're on the East Coast. He calls me at like 8 a.m., which I don't even know what the math is here, but it's so early. He'd call it, Joe Georgiana call me fired up and I'm and there's yelling and, and Joe's yelling. Everyone's yelling. I hear my dad yelling. I'm like, what's going on? Joe, wh what's happening? And Joe Georgiana goes, your father set my toaster on fire. <laughs> I said, what? First of all, I thought that's what toasters did was like toasters, like toast things. He's like, no, it's up the cabinets. It's up the cabinets. I'm like, shouldn't you call the fire department? I'm not the fire department. He's like, I just want to let you know what I'm dealing with. <laughs> so as far as Johnny Mac creates wanting to know about tips on beating winter depression, I don't know if Florida's the answer. I wonder if Florida's sick of all the New Yorkers going down. It's got to be. It's got to be sick of it. It's got to be like, why, why are you sending everyone there? Why are you all coming down here? Well, because Joe jo Georgiana has a very appealing place and Joe Peluso thinks he's going to get all the relief. But unfortunately, winter depression is a real thing. And I honestly think that uh, I'm sure Huberman Labs has an entire episode about how to beat winter depression. I think eggnog helps. I think playing with children helps. Not like that. Not. I watched the sound of freedom and I, I can't even. I'm, I'm a changed person. I honestly mean getting down and playing with kids. They're so much fun. Kids remind you of how much fun snow can be. You really have to get out and just play in it and, and throw snowballs at your nephew right in the face. That's how I beat winter depression. He loves it. Are you kidding me? I would knock a full set of teeth out before he'd even care. You just got to find ways to play more. And there's obviously science with vitamin D and sun exposure. I hate to say go tanning, but there's something to sun exposure during the winter months. Why do people go south where the sun is? There's something to that. There's real science behind that. But if you're in a place where you can't get down to the, to the south, you have to find somebody who has a rich husband so they can buy you a sauna. You have to find somebody who can buy you a sauna. But for real, there are red light therapies, little plugins. Go to Amazon. You can check out these little red light plug-in things. Maybe you can, I'll add those for the gift guide. Red light exposure supposedly helps with so much stuff. It's kind of, it's an add-on you can get to your sauna. My sister got a package. Look, I was home one year. I said, guys, winter depression is real. I don't live in New York State, but I, I set up the house so that if I did have to move there, I'd be happy. So we've got a cold dip. We've got a jacuzzi and a sauna. I'll let you know how all that goes. I'll tell you one thing. The house is not depressed. What helps them is tequila and edibles. We're going to add that to them. Just writing that down to the list. Tequila and edibles. I think winter depression is <laughs> it's so funny to be sad because it's cold. I'm sorry. 
I know it's a real thing. Oh God, that really just hit me. Oh, <laughs> but my dad really bad battled it, but essentially you're sad because it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just create some heat. Johnny Mac. Whatever gives you heat in life. Cook for somebody. Do a dance in your kitchen. Jump in a lake. Embrace it. You know what you know what the best way to deal with something that's bothering you is to face it head on. I think that's why they have those like polar bear dips. Why people in really cold areas jump in lakes and they go into the ocean and they just face it head on. Just run and jump in the freaking cold. Find yourself a nice lady to nuzzle up with or a fella. Get a little hot cuppa. <laughs> <laughs> a hot cup of hot cocoa. <laughs> and be grateful that you're fucking alive, Johnny Cakes. You're sad it's cold. My dad is dead. I love you guys. Don't forget to rate the podcast. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>